and get away from all this. Because mm -hmm. she convinces them that this is what we should do. Doesn't tell them why. Doesn't give them the underlying Claire says story. This? Claire convinces them mm -hmm. we need to go to Switzerland. So um, Mary says that her summer in Switzerland was what led her from her childhood into a into life. Like this is what made her a woman. Mm. I mean, not sleeping with Percy Shelley and having his babies in, but this summer in Switzerland really opened her up to what life is. Mm. Um, they went there anticipating, you know, a nice summer vacation, basically. Uh, Swiss Alps. Yeah, they're in the Swiss. It's probably gorgeous. They go on skiing. No. <laughs> they, and they said, like, I read some things where it talked about they would go on donkeys and go up into the Alps and, like, watch the sun set. So ah, I can imagine it's they... It's a charmed life. Yeah. Like, and you're in debt and you can do this? Like, I'm sorry. There must... Debt back then must have been different than now. It is, because, like, there was no, like, internet or telephones. So, like, you were in debt in London. Then you go to Switzerland well, and you're a rich the man. Money? They're, like, credit. Oh, I guess. Because they're a lord. They, they look fancy and stuff. Right. Yeah, that's true. You're right. That makes sense. Um, So... Mary, who's 17, Claire's 18, uh, Percy's 24, and they have a, their four-month-old baby with them. Um, and Claire's pregnant with Lord Byron's baby. They they arrive May 18, in, in May of 1816 in Geneva, Switzerland, looking for a nice vacation. And, you know, something to note back then, because I read a few romance novels of the time. You want to <laughs> use them as, like, a, a basis of comparison. But, um... Back then, if a woman got pregnant by a man and she wasn't married to him, that man was not held responsible. Oh, no. For anything. Like, no. you're a bad woman because you got pregnant yeah. out of wedlock, well, wedlock and now your child's a bastard. And it's like the child's fault yeah, like the that child the parents weren't married. And it's so it's infuriating because it's like like a man was not held responsible. He could and sow his seed all mind over. Mind you, Claire's 18 and Lord Byron's 28. He's a grown-ass man. So, uh, Byron, not knowing that they, they end up at the same place and they see each other and he's a little annoyed to see Claire because he's like, I'm, you're boring me now. I don't want anything to do with And you much. say I got you pregnant. Well, he doesn't know this yet. Yeah. She hasn't told him she's pregnant. Um, Percy, Shelley and Byron had never met, but they were big fans of each other's work and they're basically the same person. They, yeah. Um, and they became fast friends. Oh, they were besties. They're doing everything. They probably got lockets with their pictures in them. They loved each other. Um, Byron uh, just traveled with his personal physician, John uh, Polidori. 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 Um, he is was a young doctor, very just out of medical school, and he's described as being emotionally troubled. And <laughs> if you watch nice. Gothic, it's hor he's horrifying in it. <laughs> and he's, the character that plays him does not look young. Like This guy's like 21 in real life. I don't know how old the guy is that plays them, but he looks much older than everyone else. Like, I was surprised to read that. I know Gothic isn't, is like, a, not a true story. True story is based on a true story. Not everything really happened. The guy probably did wear corsets, though. I bet he did. Because he's kind <laughs> of a big baby face. He's a big baby. He gets all puffed up and mad about things and runs off um, while they're there together. Um, so they decided instead of doing what they were going to do, that they're going to rent a house together. It was actually, like, two houses on this land with this giant house in the middle um, where they'd spend their time together and they'd sleep in separate places. Um, they rented the Villa di Dati on the lake on Lake Geneva. So they're right on the water. Uh, and it's gorgeous and beautiful. Um, and they're there looking for sunshine and sailing and all these things. But remember that volcano that erupted. Right. Turn Geneva into winter time, basically, in the middle of summer. So, and, and like, it was, like, crazy. People were going, like, what, like, what is happening? Like, people really thought we're never going to see of, the sun again. It's the end of the world. Yeah. And um, so it wasn't what they expected. It was cold, stormy, lots of lightning, lots of creepy storms that, in this big, giant mansion thing they're staying in that makes it real scary. They probably leak in the wind house yeah. and the walls and there's water dripping on your head. So they can't go outside. They're stuck in the house while they're there together. And they're there for several months together in this place, all these people. Um, so things got a little intense in there. Um, Byron was like really annoyed because Claire kept on throwing herself at him basically. 
And he's quoted as saying, I never loved her nor pretended to love her, but a man is a man. If a girl of 18 comes prancing to you at all hours, there is but one way. So basically he just slept with her all summer, even though he was annoyed with her and didn't want anything to do with her other than having sex and walking away. I want to slap him. He's the worst. He's awful. (laughs) Get a knife and cut him. (laughs) <laughs> the young doctor fell in love with Mary. He was obsessed with her and he kept on like making sexual advances at her. But Percy is depressed because he's a mess all the time. Percy's just a mess. He's very self-absorbed. It's all about Percy. And he, um, and that's probably why he was a good poet, really. That's why Lord Byron was a good poet. They get all really obsessed with themselves and they get in their head. And that's probably why they wrote good poem. You know what I mean? That makes sense. But he was depressed. So he didn't even notice that she was like, this guy was getting in on this woman. Like, and she was like, get away from me, you creep. Like, she didn't want anything to do with them. Why would she when she had a poet? Yeah, she had she had Julian Sands. And if you saw what the other guy looked like in the movie, you definitely know why she didn't want him. <laughs> oh. so I'm they, sorry if I'm crunching. I'm eating popcorn. Margaret so you can hear it. Munchin. Listen, we are, we are fat girls. We are going to eat and we're going to drink during our <laughs> podcast. And if you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Please listen to our podcast. Yes, I'm just kidding. Kelly. I'm just kidding. If you don't like it. We're not going to stop, but we still like it when you listen. Okay. So anyway, to cope with the tension in the house, they um, st- were reading horror stories and morbid poems and talking about uh, galvanism. 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 Thank you. It's like electricity. Yes. And uh, Erasmus Darwin was doing experiments, which is the son of uh, Charles. Charles Darwin. Mm-hmm. Um which is the science science of electrifying dead bodies and trying to make them animate animate yeah reanimating reanimating them trying to make them their muscles move, move. with using yeah so they're talking about this because it's big right then there a lot of stuff's happening and um oh my god side note there's a series on Netflix or Hulu one of the two maybe Netflix. Um, and it has a couple of seasons out and Sean Bean is in it, who I have a huge crush on. Love Sean Bean. He plays uh, Eddard Stark in Game of Thrones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's also in the Lord of the Rings movies. Mm-hmm. He's been in lots of stuff. I love him. He's, he's handsome in his own way. He's very handsome. Yes. But he's in a movie, he's in a TV show based on, like, he's a, basically a Frankenstein. And it's, Ooh, it's like based I on, saw and that. They, they talk about like Mary it, Shelley's book. How cool. Like, Mary Shelley wrote a book. But it's, like, that time frame and a man and then who's reanimating. Right, and it t- shows him experimenting with electricity, making muscles and stuff move. That's cool. It's pretty, yeah, it's, like, you should find the show and watch it. It's I cool. saw it on there. It's I have it on my list. I can't remember. It's, like, Frankenstein it's or like something? It's, like, Frankenstein or something like that. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. But it's new. It's, it's only, it's had a few seasons, and mm-hmm. I'm waiting for the next I, one. I have it on uh, my list of things to watch, actually. Um, you should watch it. It's good. They also, at the time, were consuming copious amounts of wine and opium. Fun. So, it was just a big, morbid, like... I'm sure they were hallucinating. (laughs) Yes. Oh, speaking of which, I have a little side note here. At one point, Percy jumped, ran out of room screaming one night because he thought, he hallucinated that Mary had sprouted demonic eyes instead of nips. But her nipples were replaced with <laughs> demonic eyeballs. And he ran out of there and screaming. So they were hallucinating. They're tripping. They're tripping. They're tripping they're, balls I think there's some me. free love going on in there. They call that tripping balls. Yes. Like, they were totally. tripping tits. Cause they tripping. <laughs> <laughs> um, and because of all these things happening, like they're running around outside. They're naked probably. Probably, yeah. So there's, of all the, a lot of people were in Switzerland, like English would go to Switzerland to they holiday holiday in the summertime like for months and months yes like that's how you gotta wait like what um anyway so they're there and like rumors are happening because what's happening in that villa they're like okay all these people are in there and they know of percy shelley and they know of Lord, but they have bad reputations mm-hmm. to being who they are um so they're going past in their boats and they're in it, because the women have been hanging their underwear outside and in line to dry <laughs> So they're getting a big thrill out of that and hoping they see him run around naked. So they're driving, going past in their boats by the house. And Looking for looky loos. Yeah. The original looky loos. <laughs> looky loos. And Byron was rumored to be corrupting the local young girls. So oh, I'm he sure. Was, and I'm sure he was. He's probably okay. hot, too. And it's probably just a whole thing. I'm sure all the girls loved A lot loved of it, too. Them. They didn't even have to be hot. They just had to be a wealthy lord. Yeah. At the time. And charming. Yeah. 
but he's hot and gothic, so I'm just going to go with that in my head. Um, so one stormy night by the fire, Byron challenged them to write a story to rival the ghost stories they have been reading. Mm-hmm. So he made this challenge, like, we're all going to write a story. we got to come up with an idea. We're going to see who has the best one. So um, Mary was a little embarrassed because every morning she'd wake up and, like, got a story yet. And she's like, no, I don't have one. Um, and everyone else is kind of writing something already. And she's like feeling, um, <clears throat> inferior, right? Cause she wants to write. Claire could care less. Claire's just there trying to bang Lord Byron. That's her only goal while she's there is to get him to love her. That's what she wants. It's kind of sad. She's that. What are you looking for, Margaret? My phone. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> and so <laughs> they're, um, so she's trying to think of a story. Mm-hmm. Now it's storming, lots of lightning's happening. She goes to bed one night and she has this bad waking dream. And I'm going to read the quote that she said she saw. I have to pull it up on my phone because um, this is where she comes up with Frankenstein. Now think of the weather at the time. Think of they're doing mm. they're doing hallucinogenics. They're inside a lot. They don't have a lot to do. They're reading a lot of horror stuff. I really feel oh he was hot. I yeah. think he's hot. He is. Real Lord even, Byron, it's even hot. with his dumb mustache, even with the dumb mustache, he's very handsome. In the paintings, and the paintings, yeah, he's he's nice. Um, so a lot of things are going on that are haunting and scary, and there's a lot of electricity happening, right, because of the lightning. Mm-hmm. So Mary has this dream, and let me pull it up here on my phone, because you know it takes me ten be, minutes I to would do totally this. Margaret, that too. I know. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's nice looking. Stupid Lord Byron. Okay, so this is what she says. <laughs> the grim ter- terrors of her waking dream. I saw a pale student of unhallowed arts kneeling beside the thing he had put together. I saw a hideous phantasm of a man stretched out, and then on the working, the working of some powerful engine, show signs of life and stir with an uneasy, half vital motion. Frightful must it be, for supremely frightful would be the effect of any human endeavor to mock the stupendous mechanism of the creator of the world. So basically she saw someone trying to bring life to a dead body um, that they created and it's kind of, you know, mocking God. So that's where her story stems from. She's she's like, I, because they were talking about the um, uh, galvanism that's Mary. Mary's not Mary back. and Percy. Mary and Percy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's him. Um, so, um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, Mary, you know, that's where she she starts her 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 idea. She jots down some idea, her basis of Frankenstein, and they were all very impressed with her ideas. Um, the two uh, experienced writers that were there, the two poets, you know, the ones that are mm-hmm. famous, basically didn't do anything. They started writing stuff, and they're like, meh, and they're too busy having sex. With each other and everyone else. Corrupting local young girls. Have, drink, eat, or smoking opium. This is probably doing mostly smoking opium. Yeah. It's it's probably, they didn't give a shit, because they're like, we're, we're artists. We're we on vacation. Um, however, the doctor, Polarity, or however you say his name. Dr. P. Polly. Dr. Dr. P. We'll call him Polly. He actually had, like, big huffy puff fights with everyone um i think everyone was kind of annoyed with him because he was just he was emotionally troubled <laughs> and he would just get all like huffy and puffy i guess and like he'd run off and pout in his room but when he was in his room pouting i think i think basically byron was probably like he was probably nerdy and byron was probably that jock that picks on the nerd like in my head that's what i'm thinking like percy and byron are the cool guys and he's like this this like wimpy little doctor guy and they just he's probably side, he's like this the um the guy from Dra- from uh rom stoker's dracula that eats the bugs yeah he's, he's that, that guy. guy and no one everyone's just like go oh. and mary doesn't want anything to do with him and he's just a big Ooh, eh, eh, eh. he goes to his room he's igor he's igor so he runs and away Frank's and he's like he's writing a book himself he actually writes the book vamp the vampire with a y vampire yeah um, it actually was published in 1819. Um, reviewers say that the villain Lord Ruthven was inspired by Lord Byron. <laughs> in all his wicked adventures. So basically, if you read the story, The Vampire, you will um, get a... basically get a hint of what Lord Byron was like. Cause he Apparently, 
he was probably not nice to this guy and he probably saw how he treated all these people and he's like he's like this vampire emotional um, vampire